In this video, I'm completing my .cli application to run my no-code automated tests. Hey guys, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Dane from Fullstacks and I'm trying to build the most advanced test automation software for Flutter teams. Yesterday, what we started was the process of converting this Flutter application on the left into a dot command line application so that I can run it on the CI like code magic or GitHub actions. In that process, I created two commands. The first one was the email and password authentication. The second one is the run command, which will run the actual tests. We completed yesterday these two lines of code. But that's basically connecting our project to Firestore and getting the product information that we need to run the tests. The goal for today in this focus sprint is pretty simple. All we want to do is call the run test function from the CLI with all the required information. And that's what we'll dive into today. To give you a quick overview of why I say the required information, if I call sweet core and I say run select the tests, I need to pass it a test tree, which consists of all the test suites, as well as some other information. The test runner configuration, which tells the Flutter driver how long to pause in between certain parts of the test runs. The Android SDK path, and this is required because I use ADB to install the applications and I don't depend on Flutter itself. The path of the APK or the app, the device to run on, and the Xcode SDK path. That's also similar to what we do with the Android SDK path. So in this focus print, that's what I'll be collecting. And I'll show you guys in a few minutes what I've come up with and how we are handling that. So we got everything working. I'll just go through what it is and then I'll show you that it's actually working. First thing for the test tree, I thought we would need more information, but it turns out I just require a list of test suites, so that's fine. The runner configuration only allows us to set the duration between steps that's being run. The Android SDK path, obviously I'm not going to keep this hard coded, but currently it points to the assets that I ship with a test suite application. So it's not in the same folder as the command line yet, but I do have a separate task for that where I'll work on the packaging of this command line and in that task I'll figure out where to put this file and then ship that with the CLI app. The application path we pass in through the command line so I'll show you how that works and for the device I have a basic device which will provide the name identifier and the platform and then on the side of the suite core it will construct the correct emulator type to use when installing the app and controlling the device and for the main piece of demo is that i want to show you if i run this through a, the cli which is the dot run command on the right you'll see the app being closed and then install and then yeah it just goes through and runs all the tests as you see on the right side this is doing exactly what the test suite application does there's some stuff I have to figure out, but as you see, it goes through, everything is done, and it tells us that it's successful. Everything works. Okay, so the last few things which I don't really need to show is that I'm going to ask the user to pass in the identifier as well as the platform. Now, this is a little bit difficult, so I need to figure out if I'm going to list the devices and allow the user to select from it. Or if I will just find active devices and run it on the first device. The other thing we need to do is if the user provides a path to an APK file, like I did in this case, I need to kind of assume that it's for Android. So I can use that to assume the platform and then run it on the first available Android device. If it's a .app file, I need to run it on the first available simulator device. So that's... A little bit of work that I have to do for that. And then this should be ready to move on to the next task, which is to print out all of this messy information in a more structured manner. And with structured, I have decided, as I showed in the previous video from yesterday, that we will be showing the results in the following way. So that's the format that I've chosen. I'll go ahead and implement this 
you will probably see it in a few seconds, but I'm going to go spend two hours getting that done. And I told you it would be done in a few seconds. I'm going to run this command and just keep an eye on the right side of the screen and also the side. So currently it's printing out in the format that I wanted, but as you can see, there's a few additional things that pop up in between. I also have to figure out how I'm going to deal with this permission dialog on the CLI, but that is a problem for a separate video. Looking at this, we can see that it prints out exactly what I wanted to do. It's a bit messy, but as you can see, it shows you each of the steps. This part, I actually can't disable at the moment. It's printing out from Flutter driver directly. So I need to figure out how I can block those prints as well as some of these things that are printing out at the top here. With that said, this is kind of the format that I wanted. When there's an error like this, I'll print something out. This is causing that for a different reason, which we don't need to get into now. But yeah, those are my tasks for the day. If you guys want to try out test suites, you can head over to testsuites.com. And that is where you can find the product if you click on the Get Started for free. And if you want to learn how to use the product, you can go to the Academy where I have a eight course video series that you can follow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again tomorrow.